low gravity, you fickle mistress, but so misunderstood. Alright, full disclosure, this video is actually sorta kinda directed at Flat Earthers. Ever since I humiliated them earlier this year, I've been hanging around their chats, witnessing some of the world's saddest debates. The topic of gravity comes up a lot, so I'm here to set the record straight. So here it goes. Do you remember projectile motion from high school physics? Your teacher might have said something like, When y'all throw something like this here ear of sweet corn, that their ear will follow a parabolic trajectory through the air until it acquaints itself with the ground. What? Didn't everybody's physics teachers talk like that? It's true. If I toss this apple into the air, gravity accelerates it back down and it follows a parabolic height over time. But what if things don't stop at the ground? What if we ghost the Earth and track the apple's journey? Clearly the object fell into an elliptical orbit around Earth's center of mass, bringing the apple right back into my hand. But wait, parabolas only go down forever, so we know it can't be that. But parabolas fit what we observe so well, so what's going on here? To answer that, we must first define what an ellipse is. Ellipses are mathematically defined as the path traced around two focal points such that the sum of the two distances is always the same. If the focal points are at the same spot, we got ourselves a circle, ladies and gentlemen. If they are infinitely far away, you get a parabola. There it is. Since the Earth is just so gosh darn massive compared to the scale that you and I interact with things, we simply approximate the hugeness of the Earth to be infinite. But don't be lulled into thinking that parabolas are acceptable in all cases. Just as a fun thought experiment, what if you had quite the throwing arm and could lob objects on a planetary scale? Considering a parabola fails to account for the fact that the incidence angle of gravity changes on the object over time, the only way to get the right answer is with a Kepler ellipse with a focal point at the center of Earth. And if we zoom out even more, we see Kepler ellipses appear all over space and track the trajectories of planets, stars, and even galaxies, making the Kepler ellipse the master equation for calculating the trajectory for any object in the universe. Or, you know, you could just use a parabola. I don't care. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember, if you want to help pick next week's topic, just stand outside my bedroom window with a boombox until we rekindle the flame, baby. And then you can tell me your idea after that, I guess.